Hi and welcome to another lesson in the physics video series. Today we will be discussing the police and speeder problem. It goes something like this. A speeding motorist traveling at a certain speed, in this case 20 meters per second, passes a stopped police car. The police car immediately begins to chase the speeder, accelerating at a constant rate, which we make in this problem 4 meters per second squared. You could make these initial speeds and accelerations anything you want. There are three basic questions. How long does it take for the police car to intercept or to catch the speeder? How far did the police car travel before catching up to the speeder? And how fast was the police car traveling when it finally catches up to the speeder? All right, let's take a look at these initial conditions right here. We'll make the first car the policeman who has an initial speed of zero and begins to accelerate from rest at a four meter per second squared acceleration. The other car, the speeder himself, We'll make car number two, we'll give him an initial speed of 20, but we're going to make him have no acceleration. Of course, you can change these initial conditions, but let's start with the simplest scenario first. An accelerating policeman catching up to a constant velocity speeder. The first thing I'm going to do is set up a chart where I have the time axis on the X from zero to so many seconds. And I'm going to set up two pairs of Y axes, one for the displacement and speed of the police car and the other one for the displacement and speed for the speeder who happens to be moving at a constant velocity. Wherever I have a V column I will be using the VF equals VL plus AT equation and wherever I have a D column I will be using the D final equals VOT plus one half AT squared formula. Since the police car starts to accelerate at the moment the speeder passes him the D0 here there will be no head start and that will be zero. So this formula will just simplify to D equals VOT plus 1FAT squared. Well, let's take a look at how to make that chart. We're going to observe that the blue bars are the police data. So these two here, D1 and V1. And the cream colored cells will be the speeder, which will be these two over here. Let's fill in this chart right now. Using D equals V0T plus 1FAT squared. We will fill in this chart and see these are the distances traveled by the police car in the 10 second interval. Similarly, here are the increases in speeds by the police car. We know that the policeman is accelerating at 4 meters per second squared. So his speed increases by 4 meters per second for each second that he travels. Now we know the speeder is moving at a constant rate of 20 meters per second. So the whole time that this car is traveling, say for the 10 seconds, his speed never changes. He has no acceleration and he remains at 20 meters per second. And how far does he go? Well, he goes 20 meters per second. So after one second, he's gone 20 meters. After two seconds, 20 more meters, which makes 40. And of course, for the whole 10 seconds, he goes 200 meters. Now let's take a look at what's similar on each of these graphs and then we're going to plot them. We can see that in the time of 0 to 10 seconds, the police car covers a total distance of 200 meters and the speeder covers the same distance of 200 meters. That means that at 10 seconds, the policeman caught up to the speeder at a position of 200 meters since the beginning of the acceleration. And we happen to notice that at halfway through the time interval at five seconds, the speed of the accelerating policeman matches the constant speed of the speeder. However, when the policeman finally catches up to the speeder, he's actually traveling at 40 meters per second while the speeder is maintaining his constant speed of 20 meters per second. So he's actually doubled the speed of the speeder and he has to go that fast and keep accelerating in order to catch up. Here we're going to take a look at the D versus T graph for the orange D2 and time and the blue D1 and time. And we know that the orange line is the speeder and the speeder is maintaining a constant speed of 20 meters per second. So his D versus T graph is a constant slope straight line with the equation D equals 20 meters per second times time. The policeman is accelerating and therefore he has a parabola for his DT graph. And you can see that his D is 0, 2, 8, 18, 32, all the way up to 200. And his equation is 
D equals 2 T squared. So the 2 is actually one half of the acceleration. As you see from the formula, D equals VOT plus one half A T squared. So the one half that you see here means that the coefficient of the number in front of the T squared is only half of the actual acceleration. And so the parabola meets the line right here at 10 seconds and 2 meters away. The intersection of the parabola with the straight line graphically represents the physical location where the policeman actually catches the speeder, that's the 200 meters, at this particular time of 10 seconds. Let's take a look at the velocity time graphs for both of these. Here we can see in the velocity versus time graph for the policeman and speeder, the speeder has a constant speed of 20 meters per second. There is no acceleration. That's why his equation is V equals 20 meters per second plus zero times time. There is no acceleration, so he's just V equals 20. And that's what you have in this column, and that's what you have on this orange line. But the policeman does accelerate, and he starts from rest. He has a zero speed when he begins, and after 10 seconds, he has a 40 meter per second speed. You can see the policeman has a positive slope of 4 meters per second squared. And since his speed increases by 4, eventually you can see right here in the middle, the speed of both the policeman and the speeder are the same. However, this is not where they catch up. Remember, this is only five seconds into the whole journey. We know that they catch up at 10 seconds. So at 10 seconds, the policeman maintained a 20 meter per second speed, but the policeman had to accelerate and get much faster to cover that distance. And he has double the speed at that 10 seconds. Here is a vertical comparison of the distance time and the velocity time graphs for the policeman and for the speeder. The policeman is in blue, the speeder is in orange. You can see that in the DT, VT graphs at 5 seconds, which I have perfectly lined up right here, even though they have the same speed, the positions do not match. And you can see at the 10 second mark where the positions do match, the speeds don't match and the policeman actually has double the speed of the speeder at that moment. And here's the summary view of the whole problem. We have the policeman in blue and the speeder in orange. The speeder has a constant velocity of 20 meters per second with no acceleration, but the policeman has a zero meter per second initial speed and a four meter per second acceleration rate so he gets faster by four meters per second for every second that he travels and you could see that this data chart puts two vehicles on one set of axes one for dt one for vt the intersection of a dt graph is the point at which the two vehicles meet the intersection of the vt graph is the point in time when the two vehicles have the same speed I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.